welcome everyone and good evening uh, to all so uh, myself santosh kumar i am a senior technical lead from hcl and i am a four time cis of corner mep today uh, here i am going to talk about uh, microsoft graph uh, with the association of cis of corner and chennai chapter and i say thanks to cis of corner and chennai chapter lead uh, santosh kumar munuswami okay so um, this is uh, uh, i have planned to give us a series series of my um, uh, series of webinar on microsoft graph that's called i have uh, named it as deep dive into microsoft graph and i have planned for now i have planned to have uh, give a session up up to five five webinars okay so uh, it will be uh, um, continue maybe uh, alternative weekends okay today uh, i'm going to first i'm going to just give about yeah introduction about what is microsoft graph and uh, uh, how we can access uh, this how we can use this microsoft graph against uh, using graph explorer so today is our agenda is first we are going to talk, uh, see about uh, microsoft cloud services okay what is uh, the role on uh, uh, and also we have to see uh, we are going to see what is the role about uh, uh, microsoft graph in microsoft cloud services then we see what is microsoft graph and why it is important in our days then we will see a simple basic demo on microsoft graph explorer then we'll see uh, how we can uh, um, what are the permissions and what are the, what kind of authentications we have to do to access microsoft graph api then uh, the uh different formats for using this microsoft graph then we have a uh, some elaborate explore uh, elaborate demo on microsoft graph explorer we can access we can uh, we can have a uh, um, lot of demos in uh, this coming today at last we have a quick uh, q and a session to have a, a discussion with uh, you and me okay so what is uh, cloud services microsoft cloud services nowadays uh, microsoft is uh, keep on blooming on uh, cloud environment and they are keep on investing uh, um, uh, their uh, money in uh, the cloud environment just they are having office 65 and also so a lot of things are coming in a microsoft platform okay so now uh, just in um, before the, during the build 2018 microsoft have introduced a separate concept called microsoft 365 okay so this so microsoft 365 is it's just here just bundle of uh, what we have in a cloud environment that is office 365 and then windows 10 and uh, some uh, few months before they have introduced a windows timeline which is which is shows you the activities what are the activities you are doing uh, across the cloud environment and then you can be able to see those activities under the windows 10 uh, uh, timeline that will be available in windows 10 os and then uh, the enterprise mobility and security that is this contains the azure ad and into the managing uh, the uh, different kind of environments from the cloud so the so combination of all that's what they are calling it as a microsoft 365 so and then have have uh, the lot of uh, things lot of uh, services which provided by office 65 i think most of uh, most of the organizations are using uh, the sharepoint onedrive outlook that is exchange and then uh, now uh, uh, some of the organizations are moving from skype for business to teams so and then um, the excel online word online so lot of things are available in office 65 so that's what the bundle of all cloud services which we are calling it as a microsoft 365 and these are all the microsoft cloud services so uh, you can ask me so uh, what is the role of the graph api in this microsoft 365 yeah let let me see it so uh, before uh, before saying that uh, uh, about microsoft graph we'll see the data what are what kind of data is available in microsoft cloud services so uh, so uh, around uh, 90% of uh, fortune companies are using the microsoft cloud environment and they are having their data in the microsoft cloud environment so there are lot of data maybe a trillion a trillion of resources are available in microsoft cloud services 
the one kind of static content static content means whatever documents you are creating excel or access so the static content you are creating and then you have uploaded to uh, the sharepoint or onedrive or you have attached those document to in outlook that uh, through the emails so this kind of uh, uh, contents are called uh, static and these are all stored in the microsoft cloud okay then the conversation and feeds so this is the dynamic data so whenever the you are sending the email and then you are having the conversation in skype for business or in uh, the microsoft teams or in yammer so whatever conversations or feeds you are doing that is a dynamic data and these are also stored in the cloud environment okay then there is a ambient data ambient data is nothing but the insights about what uh, what kind of data you are having in the cloud environment the cloud and the uh, in the static and dynamic so based on that the back end the microsoft cloud have uh, microsoft have uh, created a artificial artificial intelligence in the back end to uh, analyze the data and then they come up with some insights or the, the business intelligence kind of thing and this this is uh, separate the inside data okay so we have different kind of data and a uh, lot of data so if you want to access this data so so far we have used a uh, different kind of apis or different kind of javascript as case to get uh, the access to the data and we have to have different kind of authentications we have to do different kind of uh, number of times we have to log in and we have to get the data so these are uh, this are cumbersome like that okay so that's what a single this uh, the data is mostly uh, the cloud environment which uh, which has revolves around you okay revolves around you and what are the groups you are in and then the entire organization this kind of data okay this kind of information is present in the cloud environment and that's what the microsoft graph which came to play the role of getting all the information or whatever information is required so we it will the microsoft graph will retrieve and give it to you with a single kind of authentication that's what we call it as microsoft graph is a unified rest api unify um, rest api to access all microsoft cloud environment and it provides uh, and it can access and it will access all the data from the cloud and then it will give you a lot of insights and then uh, whatever the information you require well. so it's just it's just because in um, uh, if you want to access the sharepoint in office x y you have to use the sharepoint rest api and then if you want to access the outlook or the exchange you have to use the uh, exchange api and if you want to access uh, the onedrive you have to use onedrive api there are a lot of there are separate separate api currently present and then you have to use their uh, rest api and then you have to do each at each time you have to authenticate on each services and you have to get the data okay so uh, that's what this microsoft graph is just uh, instead of using instead of uh, for maybe for example if you want to develop uh, a application which contains uh, 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 the develop uh, the application should require uh, some uh, files from one or some files from sharepoint and then uh, to read some conversations so these kind of things okay so there are multiple in a single application if you want to have all kind of functionalities okay you have to do each time you have to uh, uh, you have to use each uh, the step and then you have to uh, do each time authentication so to avoid that the microsoft is just you have to use graph https graph.microsoft.com and then you have to add some additional uh, sub subsections and then that will take care about getting the data from all microsoft cloud services that's what here your data across microsoft service uh, 365 it microsoft graph can access the data across all microsoft 365 and it it will be authenticated by any user the corporate or consumer consumer means just uh, mail uh, hotmail hotmail.com or lie.com does things and then you have to use uh, it's just a one single endpoint graph.microsoft.com and you have to use a single time authentication you have to have you and then there's uh, a single sdk is available so now you no need to go for different sdks or different authentication different endpoints it's just a single endpoint now 
that's what we will call it as a Microsoft is a gateway to access all cloud services. Okay, if you want to develop the web apps or the uh, uh, native applications or bots or the background process like Asus functions or timer jobs or Windows services. So whatever uh, application you can create and uh, whatever application you can create or you have to, you can access the uh, Microsoft uh, 365 environment. So you, there is a single gateway now, Microsoft Graph. By using the Microsoft Graph, you can access the uh, uh, information from Azure AD, or you can access the uh, data from the SharePoint, or you can access the data from the Drive, and you can get uh, access to the Word, uh, the contents within the Word, or contents within the Excel, or contents within the OneNote. So, uh, based on that, you can create an insight kind of uh, insight applications, and uh, and you can also do web books or real time updates. That's what we call it as a web box, real-time update. So by using this single Microsoft Graph, you can connect any uh, services from or Microsoft 365 and then and you can create any, any kind of applications. You can combine, you, uh, you, can, uh, so you can create an application which combine all services and then you can have a single application. That's what. Okay. So uh, the Microsoft Graph Explorer. It's, it's, uh, um, so so far we have uh, seen about the um, what is Microsoft Graph, and we are going to see about Microsoft Graph Explorer. So Microsoft Graph, uh, I think more all the develop, most of the developers have faced or used uh, the Postman tool for testing the REST APIs or testing the web services. Okay, so the same kind of tool which is provided by the Microsoft to test on Microsoft Graph APIs, so that they have uh, mentioned it as a Microsoft Graph Explorer. So if you want to access Microsoft Graph Explorer, just dev.microsoft.com/graph/graph-explorer. So this is a uh, just a screenshot about of Microsoft Graph Explorer. Okay, so um, now we'll see about a uh, uh, some simple demo on Microsoft Graph Explorer now. Okay, so I think let me okay some queries. Okay, so is there any queries so far? I am going to. So this is a uh, Microsoft Graph homepage, and if you want to access Graph Explorer, you have to just click on this Graph Explorer. Okay, this is a uh, Graph Explorer. Okay, you can test uh, you can test the data without login also because the Microsoft Graph Explorer has some sample data. Uh, you to access that sample data, you can you no need to log into this Graph Explorer, and you can test it on test the uh, get uh, read uh, read kind of uh, informations, okay read uh, endpoints. So here this, as I said, the single endpoint graph.microsoft.com, and then you have to use the version, and then uh, you have to this me means it will return you the um, the current sign in user information. So here I didn't log in, but anyway it will give a, it give us a, gives us a sample data. So I'm just run this query. You can see some uh, information: the my mail ID and display name, and, and some other surname, user uh, principal that login ID. So every anything we will get, and then we'll also get uh, the photo. So if you want to retrieve the photo of the uh, current user, I can just after me we have to specify this. This will return you the current user photo. So I am going to log in now, and then we'll test with my. Uh, information so I'm just logging okay yeah I have login with my uh, credentials and then I'll use uh, I'll try the same REST API now you can see uh, my name display name and then mail ID uh, you can see my login ID also so if I want to get my photo, I have to just my photo. You can see, yeah, 
here you can see uh, my profile uh, it, it will it uh, this rest endpoint which retrieves the information from um, <coughs> exchange um, the uh, exchange rest api and then it will uh, shows you the photo okay so it will the exchange and uh, the profile information about you will sync up with the exchange sharepoint and then uh, azure ad so all uh, user profile information sync up with it so this will retrieve uh, the profile information from there okay and then here uh, there are you can see the left side you can see some sample queries Okay, uh, what uh, I think Microsoft provides a lot of cloud services. Here you can see all cloud services sample queries. There is a sample. Um, uh, Microsoft also provides a sample REST endpoints. So, if we currently I have uh, Outlook email, Outlook mail, beta, SharePoint sites. These are the cloud. The these are all sample queries about each cloud services. If you want to add more. You have to just click on show sha more samples and then you can see all cloud services and then you have to just check or uncheck users groups i want to uncheck this uh, add one drive uh, i have unchecked the sharepoint sites that's all so now i have added user groups okay if i want to check this particular uh, user uh, this endpoint i have to just click on this it will generate rest endpoint here and then it displays the uh, response here okay so and then you'll we'll also see there is a modify permissions okay uh, this is uh, if you if you want to access Microsoft graph API there is a uh, some restrictions also available uh, restriction is there that was if you want to access each cloud services we have to enable the permissions to access that particular cloud services here I click on uh, modify permissions. Here you can see calendars dot read, calendars dot read dot share. These are all related to the Outlook calendar. If I enable this, then only I can able to uh, I can get the response from Outlook calendar uh, information through the Microsoft Graph. If I uncheck it, I will get only the access to any other. This uh, context is related to Outlook contacts. And device management is all related to enterprise uh, mobility. Okay, and directory, which is directory, this is related to Azure AD. And then files, which is related to the files which are stored in SharePoint or OneDrive. <coughs> group, which is related to uh, groups in Office 365. Mail, resource, which is related, uh, which is uh, related to uh, Outlook email. So a lot of all the services, if you just navigate to <coughs> below you can see all kind of cloud services uh, permissions here you have to check if you want to check out that particular cloud services uh, response you have to check it and then you have to uh, call call out that Microsoft graph rest endpoint okay so we'll move back to our so far we have learned a uh, simple uh, how to um, request how to send a request to Microsoft graph using Microsoft graph Explorer okay now we'll see about some authentication some permissions and then we'll move back to uh, uh, the further demo okay yeah moving back to our presentation yeah the permissions the permissions uh, we can say uh, uh, if you check in that uh, that modify permissions uh, uh, dialog box, you can see some uh, the mail dot read dot all like that. So that's what here the format will be. The first one will be a uh, resources. Resources will be uh, uh, the target entity. That is uh, any mail or user group. These are all these are called resources. Then we have to call dot action. Action means read or you are what you are going to do with that resource read or read write or uh, so delete uh, mostly read or read write only will be the action and then the scope scope will be what kind of scope you are assigning to that re uh, resource and action all or that is um, uh, <coughs> uh, that is you are giving the entire uh, scope or you are going to that it's like uh, um, um, you are just providing the permission to your all or uh, something shared we'll see later 
So resources will be a target entity which we can call it as a files, mail, groups, calendar, site that is site, site related to SharePoint and one no, uh, notes, notes related to one note. So these are called resources. Okay. And then the action will be read, read, write, then scope or dot all dot share because we can uh, uh, during the permission we know uh, there is no uh, this scope will be optional. We no need to give all or share. We can give file start read. That's enough. File start if you are giving uh, the permission as file start read, it will uh, that permission is only related to the current user. So whoever uh, log into that uh, application, uh, that specify do that particular uh, uh, okay. Um, that means how we can say okay uh, files or or mail dot read mail dot read means which is related to uh, whoever the login to this application they only have access that is it's like a current user current user permissions okay they will not uh, access other user information or other users uh, uh, details so it's like uh, <coughs> it's like the current user only have access to those reading all the messages or reading or read read the sending the messages to based on his current login okay if we use the dot all which is related to the uh, if I specify files dot read dot all that means that that application enables the user to read all files across the organization okay so if we no need to if you are not specifying the dot all we are uh, that current login user can able to access his own his own files only he need no to, he will not be able to access other files that's what the scope here okay some of the examples are the user dot read notes dot read write directory dot uh, read write dot all okay there is this next we'll see the different type of permission types okay that is first one is a delegated permission delegated permission is uh, uh, we can use this delegated permission in mobile or native application web application single page applications okay the scenario will be get access on behalf of users okay the application will run behalf of the current login user and this delegated when uh, if you are uh, developing the application which is say interactive mode that is if you are de uh, developing the application that uh, that application needs some information from the user so this delegated permission will be a recommended one and that application will run on behalf of that current login user okay so this uh, this permission type will not allow the user to access other user information okay if if it if he is not admin okay who can concern who can concern means user can concern for so user can access a user can give uh, the um, uh, user can give the uh, their access to the app that's what the access can uh, the app can access behalf of the current user so admin can concern for self or all users admin have access to his uh, his information and also he has access to all users information okay so and then effective permissions will be there is a permission granted to app okay we'll we'll also give we'll give the you will give some permissions to the application what we are creating okay and then the user's permission user's permissions whatever the user has permission if i'm a normal user i will only have a read read to read read to files or read write to files that's it Okay, if you, if I may know, if I may admin person, I can able to access my files and then other check out files, other user information. Okay, this you can see here the uh, application also some set of permission and user have user also the current login user also has some set of permission. So here this delegated permission type application will use the permissions only in the interaction interaction set okay so if the application the current user uh, okay if uh, the application i am creating which uh, has the application which has um, user dot read your uh, sorry uh, file start read file start read write the application has but the user has user only has uh, file start read then this application allows the user to only read the files he can't able to write the files or upload the files or the delete the files so it's the interaction the uh, that is 
intersection the sorry uh, this is the intersection of the prime sense so what the uh, the what are the prime sense saw inter uh, interconnected bet between these two those uh, this application allows the user to access that kind of level only but this application has the read write also but the user doesn't have read write the user can't able to uh, upload or edit the document so next one is application permissions this is called this means of in sharepoint maybe we can call it the add in add in permissions okay this has uh, the application type will be services or demand that is uh, uh, asu functions or timer jobs or remote event timers like that so this kind of uh, things and this get access as a service so here user is no need to log in it get it has its own permission and based on that permission it will run that application okay permissions uh, this will run the permissions granted to app so here the user is no need to log in and this thing okay so now we you'll see is uh, uh, the what uh, basic because the uh, uh, microsoft graph is running uh, is running based on the o, uh, authentication flow so here we have a four type of uh, resources resource owner and then what client a client a client machine that is whatever we are using uh, for sending the request and the one is authorization server and then a resource server first if you want to if you are creating the application the application should have uh, some uh, um, trust with that uh, the server authorization server so we have to first create uh, application app app say client say client id and secret first we have to register the app, our application and get the client id and secret and then we have to uh, access the application that the application will get based on the client id and secret it gets the uh, issue token that is uh, access token from authorization server and then based on the uh, access token it sends the request to the particular server maybe sharepoint server or the onedrive server whatever server so it sends a uh, request to that server and it gets its uh, it checks where dates with the authorization server and send the response to the oauth client so this is called this is a normal authentication oauth authentication flow so microsoft graph is also using the same authentication flow okay any doubts so far yes, i have i'll see yeah please explain consent one more time sure okay sorry okay okay uh, here consent means uh, um okay so the uh, consent means um, uh, who can access that particular uh, application or a particular resource okay that is what who can access the particular resource so if i am using if i created application with delegated permissions the current sign in user can access the resource okay if um, the user who can access the resource if he if he have the permission to the resource then only he can access that resource through the application if he is not a resource means uh, what i'm saying is uh, uh, outlook uh, one drive sharepoint so uh, SharePoint, uh, the files within sharepoint or files within a one drive that's what i'm saying is as a resource so if uh, the user has normally okay in a one drive or uh, not sorry in a sharepoint uh, library okay in your sharepoint library we pin uh, uh, you have access one you have only read access to uh, particular document library in sharepoint site uh, particular document maybe uh, we can call it as a graph library okay in the graph library you will have only the read access okay and then i am having the read uh, write that is contribute access but you are having only the view access to that particular sharepoint uh, graph library okay so that but, but this application this daily this application is created and uh, uh, the application has a permission scope okay the permission scope is assigned to application is 
the files dot read files dot read write okay so by using this application we will uh, we are creating applica this uh, application which has uh, viewing the document or downloading the document and then uploading the document or edit the document uh, edit the metadata to that document this the application will do this kind of functionality but you are having only the read access so you will be able to only download or view the document okay so myself i'm having the contribute access so i can upload or i can download or i can modify the document okay so concern mean who can access who have access who have access to that resource then only this application the whatever application we have created using microsoft graph which allow you to access that resource if you are not having access to that resource the microsoft graph doesn't allow you to access that resource it will simply say access denied got it okay let me check okay i think uh, everyone have uh, some clarification on this so maybe if you have more clarification need we'll see it uh, f during the q and a session so uh, this microsoft graph uh, so it's just um, we will see the format of how how the format will be so graph.microsoft.com as a endpoint and then next we have to specify the version v1.0 or beta so v1.0 is just uh, whatever the endpoint the microsoft is providing is a stable one whatever the rest endpoints is in uh, beta it will be a preview it will be in as a preview mode then we have to specify the resources slash resources resource means user group sites drivers uh, this are all called as resources okay then we have to specify uh, resources which returns to the collection of data collection member uh, collection of information so in this um, if you specify after that if you specify the id it will return you the single item from that collection that's what in the under the members from collection you can see slash users slash shanta that is slash users it returns you the all users from the uh, organization and if i specify slash santa it will uh, santa means id okay it will returns you that particular santa username information alone then if you want to have more property uh, you need to get only the additional property on that particular member you have to specify the property so the response will return return you the single property then if you want to relate it or you want to get more information from this property or uh, from this resource you can specify slash member of user slash member of uh, santa slash member of will return you the collection of groups where the user santa is present then uh, additional query parameters also there so based on it you can use the top five which returns your top five in uh, a top five response from the collection and then select it returns you the proper if you want to get only some property you can use the dollar select if you want to order it you can use the dollar order by and then you can filter and then you can expand uh, within a single rest endpoint we can expand multiple collections also possible so we will see it uh, in coming sessions okay so i am moving to next so this is a, a sample uh, rest end the complete rest endpoint you can see graph.microsoft.com slash version v1.0 slash users and then i can use uh, filter option to retrieve only uh, the user principal the login id will if the login id will be santa at, at snipshot on microsoft.com so this graph endpoint will return you the particular user santa at, at snips that's it so that's what we have seen it in uh, the initial slash me okay so the same response is also written we'll see it so and then the some basic uh, operations for get get operation uh, will return you will which will return you the information return you the information from the uh, collection of microsoft cloud services then the create okay the post or uh, post method will be used for creating uh, creating any uh, resource in uh, microsoft cloud and then update for update we have to use patch method then for delete uh, we have to use delete the uh, any in resource we have to use the delete method and then for invoke or validating anything we have to use the post and then also we can use the batch 
for for batching batching of uh, the multiple resistance points if you want to run the uh, multiple resistance points parallelly you have to use the post and then you have to use the dollar bats in the uh, in the end of the step okay then this is uh, uh, i have in this table i have given some be um um the stand point for some of the cloud services for users i have we have to use after version slash users groups we have to use slash groups okay in, in coming a uh, demo we are going to we have we will see how to retrieve all the users from the organization and also how can we retrieve the particular user then we'll see uh, how to retrieve all the groups information from uh, my through the microsoft graph explorer and then we'll see uh, all the how to get the uh, messages from my uh, uh, inbox and then how to send a email to other user then we'll see how to access the files from drive okay then uh, 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 then we can see how to access the sites sites sharepoint sites from uh, uh, sharepoint list from uh, sharepoint list from sharepoint online then we'll see how to access the one note and how to create a one note sections and then we'll see how to access the excel from OneDrive or SharePoint Online. Then at last we'll see a demo one how to copy the file from OneDrive to SharePoint. Okay, so we'll move on to <coughs> the demo. Okay, so getting the following together fail to load so that server is found with status. That's what instead of uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, this uh, postman, you you can you you have to use uh, Microsoft Graph Explorer. Okay, then. Excuse me. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Actually, I'm. Yeah, I use the Microsoft Graph Explorer only. Okay. Uh, the thing what happened was uh, I'm trying to take one column value from an Excel in a SharePoint Online uh, document library. Okay. I use Graph Explorer and then I, I I'm getting the value okay. and then using a client client side scripting for example I tried jQuery okay okay and I and I and, and, and I had client ID and uh, everything I, I everything I created the only thing was um, when I tried to access it is not I, I'm even I'm getting bearer token also I I am passing the bearer token as well but I'm getting this error. Uh, the same error I'm getting. I tried Postman with uh, I tried with Postman tool just for checking purpose. This is the error I got. Some role uh, role based uh, authentication okay. something. Uh, okay, with, that's what. And then uh, uh, okay. So when we are uh, trying to get or trying to access that uh, particular resource, okay, first we have to just uh, um, uh, we have to accept that uh, consent. Consent means uh, it will uh, show you what are the permissions you need to approve. Okay, for the users. So in that URL, you have to you uh, in the particular consent uh, URL. You can uh, in the URL you can have some query parameter. You know, that query parameter which has the Python scopes. Maybe that particular Python scope is missing. Maybe due to that also you can get this forbidden another. Okay, first. Yeah, because the thing is that authentication and permission and app permission. Uh, it was not that very clear. So I I think I did some. Uh, uh, some mistake but i after that i cannot proceed okay but okay maybe we'll, we'll, because uh, this is a, a basic session on this okay we are um, uh, going to cover those kind of things in coming upcoming sessions okay maybe we'll uh, speak it later in the end of session or we'll speak it offline afterwards okay okay, okay thanks thanks thank you okay so i'm um, uh, first of all i'm going to my microsoft graph explorer and first we'll see how to get all the users from the uh, uh, organization so you have to specify this v1.0 slash users which returns you all the user information so if you want to check it i have used json to table i think this is what right you can see these are the uh, users available in the microsoft uh, that is Office 365. If I want to check more, we'll see. We'll also see it. So I'm going to admin. 
come on. So here. You can see the same users. You can see this what the response also returns. Okay, so if I want to retrieve uh, the particular user, so I want to get this, I have to get this ID user ID and then I have to specify slash users, then user ID and just click on yeah. This returns my user information alone. Okay, if I want to get where member of return should a the collection of groups wherever I am present. I am just this online tool which returns you the all groups the SAP and uh, that office wherever I am present in office X Y group. This other office X Y group I have access in these uh, these groups. Okay. Then uh, if we want to get messages from uh, Outlook slash messages it will return you the collection of all messages from the Outlook at present it will returns you the first 10 <coughs> you can see uh, okay You can see there are only uh, 10, uh, yeah, there are 8, 9, uh, yeah, 0 to 9. That first it will return you the first 10 messages. So, it by default it has uh, it will do the pagination. If you want to avoid this, uh, this pagination, and then if you want to retrieve the first 100 items, you have to use top 100. Okay, and then if you want to retrieve the next hundred, you will get in the response itself. You will get the next link. You can see this next link. So it will return you the top hundred after the one thirty one twenty two. So one thirty two means this is the ID which is using. So it will return you the next hundred items after this one twenty two. This uh, this user ID slash messages will retrieve you all messages including whatever message uh, outlook emails you are sending and what uh, that is uh, this will sh show the messages from all uh, all folders in the outlook even inbox or sent items or delete items all the messages will be sh shown here so if you want to see whatever uh, info whatever emails you have sent to others that is the um, the mails or the outlook emails from the sent uh, sent items folder if you want to get it so i am just going to outlook mail you can see uh, my mails from an address so this will return you the information uh, in, uh, that is in uh, items which are sent from your end okay so if you want to uh, retrieve the messages whatever you have received you have to specify it to or maybe no. okay this will return you the messages of uh, the from items sorry uh, from the inbox uh, inbox folder so these are the messages will you have received from in the inbox folder to check it okay so now we'll see about um, how to send a email okay so let me for sending the email I am just using slash email for sending the email we have to use the post method so I'm going to use the send email uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, hello. Yeah. yeah. Just what is the what is the purpose of sending email using uh, Graph Explorer? Uh, we don't have any other uh, option. I mean, what is uh, what is the uh, no, why uh, is it used? No. Here I am. I'm just explaining about uh, what kind of REST API, what kind of API endpoints we can use against the Microsoft Graph. This is for uh, this is for testing purpose. Maybe. 
in uh, maybe in uh, uh, if you want to if you uh, maybe if you have the requirement to create a application that uh, from that application you need to send a email instead of outlook if you want to send the email from your application then this is rest end point uh, will be used for you this is for mostly uh, the graph explorer will be used for developers and admins for testing purpose there is a uh, uh, now yeah. Yeah, here there is no end users will come and test and they, uh, they will don't do that kind of stuff here because this is mostly it will have only the technical stuff here. So admins and uh, developers can test their rest endpoints before moving that to uh, uh, in the code. Okay, before moving that to use a graph uh, SDKs and all. So this is a uh, simple yeah, base. Yeah. Yeah, for a real-time application, do you think uh, this is recommended to use for sending email? Graph Explorer is the best option, or do you have any other options? Um, Graph Explorer, this is for, uh, you see, uh, this... Yeah, I, know, I, know, I know, I know, it's just for testing purpose, and uh, it's a one of the options, but is it is it, uh, is it really uh, the best one to use for uh, app, app, app development, application development, for sending emails? Yeah, that is... Uh, Maybe in the back end, if you check it as related to consent, okay, uh, if you are having uh, access to send, because you you will not you, you will not allow to send a email in the name of other user, right? Because uh, the the application permission will take care about that one. So whatever email you are sending, it will be sent under your name, okay? It will not send under other user name because uh, uh, maybe uh, except admin. Okay, yeah, because if admin has the full kind of permission, he can do any tweak and, uh, and all. So, but uh, as per a normal user or normal employee in the organization, we will not be able to send an email from other users. So, you, that application only send email to the users from your email ID only. Okay, it will not... Yeah, for example, yeah. Yeah, for example I just want to... Normally, we use no reply yet. Uh, whatever uh, email address yeah. uh, from the application or reply, it no, normally an acknowledgement email uh, uh, um, uh, goes from no reply, no, not from an user. So, uh, do you think using this option, uh, Graph Explorer, can we do the same thing? Yeah, we can do the same thing, but uh, the application permission and uh, the user permission, um, uh, you should have access to that no reply sad folder, sad email ID. Okay, then only you can able to okay. send send that uh, email ID to to Microsoft Graph. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so where I left? Hmm. Yeah. Let me. This is a format for sending the email, so you can add more the information content here, or you can add uh, you can specify the HTML type, and then you can uh, uh, make this content as a, in the HTML format. So and then you have to just make this as a post. I am sending this mail to test user one. So I am send it. So for this, I'll I'll open. Uh, so I'm just. I'm just login because this test user one is authenticated with uh, multi-factor authentication, so it's sending a call for verification. I'm just accepted over my phone, so we'll see. Yeah. So I have used my login ID for uh, sending the that uh, grab, um, sending the mail ID. Uh, I have used my email ID. So here you see from address will be my name, okay? This one, and then uh, two ID to test user one. So if whatever application I have created, so that application will send the mail based on the current user email ID. So it will not use other user email ID by default, okay? But you can specify it here. In the in in the JSON format, you have to specify that from, and then you have to specify that no reply uh, that uh, that address. But you should have access to that no reply uh, address thing. Okay, 
so uh, let's move on to next thing so the lot of things are there so we'll see the one drive okay so so to get the one drive thing let me one drive yeah so i'll move to get um, so this you can see this my me drive root children which returns you the uh, items from the top level folder in one drive so i'm navigating to one drive so only so it returns article this are the folders okay so we have one two three four five folders and two files you see this returns uh, this information if you want to retrieve the sub items or the items from the four subfolders for that you have to specify drive root and then you have to pass the relative path within this column slash so i want to get it from test folder 1 ngr okay so i am going to use it test folder 1 Slash ng app. It returns some items, and we'll see. Okay, you will see the file names and the one dot txt, even dot txt, one drive, one two three four five six. You can see, yeah. So I got some conversations. can send email to group yeah right uh, if uh, group has email id okay we can able to send the email to group okay then next uh, okay so he here we'll receive uh, this drive or drive i uh, drive which specifies to the folder okay if drive i if you uh, specify if you has uh, if you use the drive item the drive item which is specified to the file okay now uh, we can also have uh, because this uh, normal this uh, drive you can see this is a documents library this is a one drive folder i want to convert this folder to a list okay so if this is a, i have converted this to list and then what are files it returns list slash items you can retrieve all the uh, uh, informations under this uh, sharepoint one uh, sharepoint one drive document library it will return all items in a uh items mode list item mode so i think uh, whoever working in the sap point they will understand about the list list item concept so if you use this uh list end point it returns all the files all the files as a list item for in the list item format so we can access all the metadata from that uh, list item so it, will, it if you use this one it returns all items under this list regardless of the folders okay so let me show you this so i have can kind of copy it and paste the response here so i can here about uh, is where is that name maybe we can specify the filter option here mm. oh filter is not there Okay. ID. I think it's there. Okay, sorry. Select equal to ID. You can see uh, this all. It returns all items under that OneDrive 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 document library. So we can fetch or uh, we can access any file items from here. Okay. Then we'll move back to next one. 
okay now we'll get all items we have done folder is done so now we'll see about how to access the SharePoint uh, to access the SharePoint site we have to use the sites so it doesn't say uh, return anything now so uh, I'm just add, removing this one drive and then adding this SharePoint site okay the SharePoint site if you want to uh, get all the site collections all the site collection all sites subsites from the organization you have to use that's all so this will return all the sites and all the subsites all the site collections from the SharePoint online it will return it so if you want to retrieve a particular site collection you have to use specify sites so I want to retrieve this particular site collection from my end so this returns uh, site stuff yeah got it and then it returns the subsites from this site stuff so these are the four uh, subsites from this top level site collection okay and also I can access this site from site this particular site from uh, site slash I have to specify the site ID this will return you this particular site collection information okay and if I want to retrieve the top level or default document library from the SharePoint site collection you have to at last we have to specify the slash drive it returns you the uh, SHA documents library because of the SHA documents is the default document library in SharePoint okay then next one so we can also get it from uh, based on the uh, we can also access this particular site collection from the uh, relative path so the, for that we have to specify host name here host name is rips.sharepoint.com this what uh, I'm just this nips.sharepoint.com this is a host name okay I'm getting yeah is it uh, yes we can able to create a list in uh, uh, using the Microsoft graph but uh, for creating the site or creating the subsite is not yet uh, available so in future we will get uh, uh, we'll get the list, uh, endpoints for creating the sites okay for creating the list or creating the content type creating that accessing creating the fields these are all available now okay so and then I have to get Right. Now you see that based on the relative part also we can able to access this particular site. Okay, so ID search then. So now we have to access the one note. So one note. Uh, uh, now we will access the one notes from the one drive. Here I have files under the notebooks folder. I will have two one note uh, files. I am going to use slash me slash one note. No, sorry. Okay. One note slash notebooks. Yeah. It returns uh, value two two values. Okay. So if you want to, uh, if I want to access one particular notebook, I have to pass this ID. Okay, after the one notebooks. So like that, we can also access the one note uh, from SharePoint library also. Only we have to specify the appropriate path in the rest endpoint. So I get team notebook shared. This is the one note I have access. You can see it here. Okay. Now we'll move back to next one, Excel. Okay. Now we'll see about how to access the Excel from the SharePoint online. So here I have I have stored a document in where uh, article documents Office 365 okay under that okay I have this flow template gallery list.xlsx 
So, I am going to access this particular Excel. So, I am also opening this one. So, I am going to access this file first. So, for that this is under uh, you can see article documents under that office 6 by folder. So, how we have to use first we have to use the sites and then we have to use the site ID for that uh, I have already have that site ID for that ok maybe we can check it. Mm. So, this is the I have used I have to get the ID the site ID site site ID retrieved it and then I have to get the drives. Drives means all the document libraries available in this particular site collection. So, this is this particular XLS file is available in Excel sheet is available in the article documents. So, I am getting this ID driver ID. So, drivers driver ID this will return you this particular document uh, library. Okay. Now, I am going to convert this to list ok I have converted now then I have to retrieve the items ok now I got the all the items all the list items under this article documents so here we have to get that I will gallery to docx docx yeah follow template gallery dot excel site so I am going to have this ID 7 plus 7. So I have got all the data, all the metadata information from this XLSX. So this is a currently this is a list item. So I want to convert this to file to a drive item. So if you use a drive item, it will convert the list item to file file format file item ok so now we have access this file so now we have to get uh, the uh, here we have two worksheets ok so to access it have to use slash workbook first field see workbook Yeah, we got the workbook and then we have to get the worksheets. Work sheets. Come on, come on. Yeah. You now you can see file gallery 2 and then my new sheet. There are two sheets. File gallery 2, my new two uh, my new sheet. Okay, got it? So we will be first now we have to get the table from this file gallery 2. So for that I have to use this ID from the collection if you want to get the particular member we have to pass the ID so now we got the ID uh, particular work sheet now we have to access the tables see now we have access this particular table table name is table 2 so now we have to get the columns Okay, we have to specify the table ID first. Two. Sorry. Yeah, you got the columns now. So so far, how many columns? A lot of. Values are the okay. No need of that. So now I am going to. I want to filter out uh, the uh, table based on the author. Okay. So there are a lot of. Uh, okay. What is okay? Uh, let me. Okay. I am going to filter it based on the Microsoft authors. Microsoft. This is a column number four. So I am going to use first. You have to use for filter. Okay. Apply. Where is that? 
so columns plus four apply uh, value filter and then I have to change it to post mode then I have to specify that uh, this one values in the JSON format and run the apply values what happened somewhere I got some problem now columns for slash apply values filter Okay, uh, okay, I think there's some I have missed somewhere. Mm. Okay, leave it. I uh, will see, I will move on to next thing. I'll come back to you on that. Okay, now we'll copy uh, how to copy the file from OneDrive to SharePoint. Okay. For to copy the uh, we uh, to copy the file from OneDrive to SharePoint, we have to under the source uh, item, okay, and uh, then we have to uh, uh, get the inf some information from target uh, uh, folder, okay, and then the file name. So here from the OneDrive, what we are going to so where I'm where my OneDrive is attachments. Okay, I want to copy this SharePoint online new feature to um, documents. Should we have to write such a long query to get the Excel file? No, because uh, this one um, uh, we are getting it from the SharePoint. So the SharePoint ID is by the now the SharePoint ID is it's very long. Otherwise, we can also get it from a relative path. Also, it can be possible. So we can reduce. Okay. So this is a uh, rest end point. Okay. And uh, the Mi the Microsoft also provides the graph uh, uh, SDK. Okay, if you are using the graph SDK, it will uh, you no need to specify the lengthy uh, uh, URL that you have to specify that particular part in that uh, graph SDK, uh, graph SDK method. So that will be uh, reduce your the length of long query. Okay, so we'll see it uh, maybe on, in uh, next my uh, webinar session. I am going to cover that graph SDK. Okay, so. So if you are using the graph SDK, no need to specify the length query. Okay, so here's um, what? Okay, copy the folder. So first we have to get uh, one right to SharePoint. So I'm going to copy this to demo documents. Okay. To get the demo documents, first we have to get this information. That is drive ID and ID of that particular folder. This should be required. We have to identify these two information from the parent for that particular folder. First time getting just. So I have retrieved the ID here. So now I will paste this ID and then slash drives. It runs you all. So from here I am going to get the demo documents ID. So here I have received this is the drive ID actually. Now I am going to space drives drive ID then have after the drive ID I am going to convert this list root
after the drive you have to use root it returns you the drive id and id so so to check it into slash children dollars filter ng null and dollar select name comma parent reference yeah now we got that document library drive id and parent id so now we have to use this one You see, now we already have it, and then we have to use this as a parent reference. So now we have to get that source, source uh, item ID. So under the attachments, we have to get this particular item. Okay. So for this, first we have to convert me drive drives drives. We have this one slash items. So first we have to convert this to list, then items. Okay. So now we have to check a uh, SAP and online new feature per ID, ID of that particular item. So where is that first present? We can copy this and then paste it here run it see so was the actual SharePoint online new feature SharePoint online Where is the attachment? Serpent online new feature. So, what's this ID? Okay. item ID of this particular item is 40 so uh, I'm going here and then slash 40 slash I'm going to call convert this to drive item okay slash copy then post you want for and then to use so say parent reference and run this query okay now i think this is completed so now we will check it from here so and then i'm going to refresh this yeah it successfully moved here now yeah got it okay now uh, we have left one of the thing in uh, the flow templates here's the filter based on this one so i'm going back to that one so uh, just have to copy this apply value filter okay and then here values will be microsoft post this was not found apply value filter before doing that we have to first create a, a session with the uh, excel because whatever changes we going to update before that we have to do the uh, the session uh, thing that then only the excel api can update that one in 
they are set. So, I am going to first create the session. So, for that I am just going Excel and then this create session. So, here we have to specify that particular workbook ID. So, until workbook I am going to copy this and then paste it here. Then run query. Okay. Now, this is done then mm, now we are going to this apply value filter apply value filter is not here yeah sorry this is apply values filter so we have to first we have to first create a session and then we have to use this apply values filter now we can see the filter is based on a Microsoft to clear it we have to use to clear the filter we have to use clear clear then run query yeah now you can see it's clear now that's all yeah thank you so thank you thank you for the uh, everyone so in um, maybe in coming uh, weeks i'll come up with the uh, another session on microsoft graph so stay tuned so we'll see you later thank you bye